my family is, is very interesting because 19 minutes my dad gave a speech for 19 minutes and they locked him in prison for 50 days. I gave a four minute speech to the European Union Parliament and immediately I had a warrant out for my arrest. So there's, there's something about speaking. I think if I spoke for longer, I would have just been buried under the prison, but maybe next time. So yeah, I, w I was recently charged and detained for praying and reading the Bible outside of a Calgary public school library where there was an underage drag show, taxpayer funded for, for zero to eight year olds. So obviously I have many issues with that, but I went there to vocally oppose this and for my horrible crime, I was briefly detained and charged on two counts. Um, this, is, this is Canada today. This is Canada today. You cannot disagree with their version of the way life is supposed to be. So uh, I do have good news though. As of two weeks ago, my charges were dropped. So that's <laughs> even by Canadian, even by our Canadian standards, it's unconstitutional. So that says a lot. Um, we're, we're still fighting. We're continuing the fight. We're gonna take my case and move it on to another person who was charged so that this law will be overturned because we're not gonna allow them to pass unconstitutional laws. Mayors don't get to just pass laws however they want. There is a constitution. There is God's law above all else. And if it violates that law, we must break it. Actually, we have an obligation to break it. So I deliberately break these laws and go to challenge them so that others are not subjugated to these laws. That's been my personal mission of late. So they, they must be challenged or else these politicians think that they can get away with this. But more, more than that, they must be held accountable. So we're suing them. As a family, we're suing them all. We're going after everything that they have done. They must be afraid to touch us. They must think twice. Is it worth it? Is it worth to go after these people? Because it's going to be a fight. We're in this. I'm, I'll do it for 10 years if, if you want to do this. Let's go. So they must be afraid to touch us. If more people stood and fought, there isn't a system that's big enough to take us all on. There's no justice system big enough to take us all on. It's said that 3% of the population is enough to start a revolution. And I mean peaceful revolution. It's said that it only takes 3% and that is enough to fight for your rights and to win your civil liberties. So we can do this. If we stopped worrying about what we have to lose, because if we go down this road, it won't matter anyways. You'll lose it regardless. It doesn't, don't be a slave to whatever is holding you back, whether that's your career, your paycheck, your mortgage, your house, your car, school, family, spouse, friends, whatever's holding you back, let it go, because you'll lose it regardless. So that you can look at your kids and say, you did everything in your power to make their futures better. You know, my dad can look, you can call my dad a lot of names, but he did everything in his power to fight for Canada, to fight for the children of Canada. So, did, did you know, my dad told me something fascinating yesterday. Did you know that the National Socialist Party, the Nazi government in Germany in the early 1930s passed 2,000 laws discriminating against Jews before the start of World War II. Small laws, small laws at first. Little, one, little ones here and there discriminating them little by little and then finally at the end of the 30s, big laws obviously segregating and then ultimately eradicating the Jews. But it started small, little by little. They allowed little laws to take place and to take hold in their country. And that's what I see in Canada today. The more I look at what Canada has become, the more I realize we have not merely stumbled, we have completely fallen. And that's what I told the European Union. I to that's what I told them. I said, Canada has fallen. We are morally depraved, godless, haters of children, haters of the elderly, haters of the poor and homeless, haters of the unborn, haters of addicts, haters of goodness, haters of what is right, and ultimately haters of God. If you want to make Canada free again, prosperous again, rich again, you must make Canada moral again. 
you must bring righteousness back. Go back to God's law. We made a covenant with God upon our inception in 1867. We promised to make God supreme, which means we acknowledge God's law first. The Ten Commandments, the Bible, prayer in public spheres and schools. Canada has taken it all out. We broke our covenant with God. Why would we be blessed after that? Why would God bless us for, for the thousands of children that are slaughtered a year? Why does Canada deserve to be blessed if we do not humble ourselves and realize that we are actually erring? You want to fix this country? Bring God back and his standards back. Em empires have fallen. And this is history. This isn't my opinion. Empires have fallen as a result of sexually, sexual immorality alone and the erosion of civic virtues. The Roman Empire, Babylonian, Persian, all crumbled because of the decline of civic virtues and the erosion of morality. This is history. Think about it. When Rome focused on building something great and a strong family and strong men, they were the greatest empire of all time. And as soon as they got bored and comfortable and complacent, what started to happen? They went into their depravity, the sexual immorality, and from within, the empire crumbled. The values that built this country are under attack. Judeo-Christian values, the Ten Commandments, the Bible, prayer, the Bill of Rights, freedom, capitalism, the family unit, and strong men. Where are the men defending and standing guard, like our national anthem says, while an evil ideology permeates our country from within? I don't see anyone standing guard anymore. Just look at our military, my goodness. Remember, just because something is normalized, legal or illegal, does not make it moral. Slavery was legal. Everything Nazi Germany did was legal, according to the government of the time. When injustice becomes law, resistance becomes duty. Thomas Jefferson. In times of tyranny and injustice, when the law oppresses the people, the outlaw takes his place in history. Young people are rising up, and you see many young people here today because we've had enough of this constantly shoved down our throats, no matter where we go, and we can't even disagree anymore. The closer the collapse of an empire, the crazier its laws are. Marcus Cicero. The empire is collapsing. We are so comfortable and bored and apathetic as a people that our country eats itself from within. In Calgary, there's a, there's a bylaw that two people were charged with. Two people were on the way to the Million Man March on a public transit and they were speaking privately to each other about the LGBT community, how they disagree with it. Someone got offended on the train, reported them, and those two people were arrested. They were actually arrested and charged because the city of Calgary passed a bylaw that you can't offend someone on public transit. Yeah, it's unbelievable, but I actually welcome all the crazy laws. As counterintuitive as that sounds, but the more craziness and ridiculous laws, maybe the faster people will wake up and take action. How many laws that are intended to enslave you will you tolerate? 2,000? Because we know how that story ended. Understand history and start pushing back before it's too late. Enough with the polite, nice, docile, useless Canadian attitude. Fight and stand up for what is right. Dietrich Bonhoeffer once said, those who are still afraid of men have no fear of God. And those who have fear of God have ceased to be afraid of men. We must fear God, not man. And that's, that's, I believe that's the story of my family. I believe that's the story of my dad, where we persevered against all odds, against the worst, the worst guns in the land, and we, we came out on top. Because we don't fear man, we fear God. So, a little bit, little bit sidetracked, but now with upcoming future elections, keep this in mind when they lie to you and try to manipulate you and gaslight you and tell you to choose the lesser of two evils. In chess, the white and black pieces are mortal enemies, but the people moving them are usually good friends. So remember that next election, just FYI. Let me finish with the most controversial and offensive statements that I can say, things I proclaim unashamedly. They remain true regardless of your feelings and opinions. And these are kind of what I believe are the main issues in our land that I wanna go over. Homosexuality is an abomination. 
Abortion is murder. There are two genders. Euthanasia, med medical assistance in dying, is eugenics. Drugs are poisoning us. COVID was a hoax. Government is not God. Science is not faith. The devil exists. Evil is real. But that means good, ex good exists. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is king, and we must go back to God as a nation, or nothing will change. So thank you. Thank you so much. Lastly, if, if you want to help out our family in our legal battles and suing the Canadian government for everything they've been doing to us, uh, we have a table backstage where we're selling some t-shirts and, and we'll, we'll be putting all the funds to making them accountable because they don't get to do this to Canadians. Thank you. God bless. Yeah, watch the waters. We love you, Nathaniel. Thank you. Our country's in good hands.